holy shit, like, this episode was good. Genuinely good. I would go so far to say it was great. In fact, this may be the first genuinely, like, great episode of this arc. It was well-paced. It was fairly well-animated. You know, just... They, they, they had a good back-and-forth going between Magetta and Vegeta. You know, you kind of felt like, you know, they set it up where there actually was a sense of tension... Sort of. I'll get to the sort of part later, but everything paced out extremely well in this episode. You have this is a continuation of their fight. They're going back and forth. Um, Vegeta's, uh, you know, he, he's having trouble breathing. There's, it's, uh, he's stuck in that friggin' hot box, pretty much situation where Magetta is uh, building up all this heat, and Vegeta can barely breathe. The air is really thin. You know, he's sweating his ass off. And it's really starting to wear at his stamina. And Magetta is just, you know, not letting up. Like, you know, he's hitting him with all, these, all these different things. Um, and uh, at one point, like, you know, one of the best fake-outs I've seen in this show. Actually, really, I guess the only fake-out in this show. But yeah, it was fucking awesome. We have Magetta actually uh, knocking Vegeta out of the ring. Like, he freaking creates this pillar of us... Um, cooled off uh, lava and just smashes Vegeta with it and sends him flying down to the to like out of the ring and Vegeta lands out of the ring but like yeah, and everyone's freaking out and like even I'm like oh wait did Vegeta just lose? Vegeta can't lose not to this guy like Vegeta still needs to fight Kaba right? like I was I was genuinely confused I was like no there's there, there, there's got to be, um, like, like more to this. There's no way, like, Vegeta just lost. And honestly, like, it, it almost had me. The only reason I didn't fall for it is that the next episode preview from the last episode fucked up and showed Vegeta using the final flash. And, um, at that point, like, in the episode, Vegeta had yet to use it. He used the Gallic gun, which was awesome, or the Gallic hole. You know, he uses that. That was awesome. Um... But then, you know, like he hadn't used the final flash, but he had already seen he was going to use the final flash. So this fight had to keep on going somehow. And, you know, they're like, um, you know, Vegeta lands on this little tiny piece of the uh, of the ring. Like, that's where his foot landed. So his, he did not actually touch outside the ring, which is the rule. Yeah, not that you land outside the ring, but, like, you know, you, you have to touch outside the ring. And he didn't touch outside the ring on a technicality. And this pisses Vegeta off. The fact that Vegeta has almost lost this round, and the only thing that kept, that kept him in the fight was the fact that he, you know, landed... He happened by chance for his foot to land on a piece of the arena. Like, when he landed. That is the only thing that kept him from losing. And he just loses it. He just kind of comes up, and he's just like, Hey, all I have to do is just not touch the barrier, right? And it's like, yeah... And Vegeta just, you know, powers up and shatters the entire barrier. And it's, like, it was fucking awesome. And then that's that's when you get it, the final flash. And he's just charging up. And this is, like, you know, like, the first great charge-up sequence I've seen in this series. Where, like, you know, you see, like, the lightning arcing off of Vegeta. And it's just, you know, like, arcing around, like, half the damn planet. And everything's shaking. It, it, it felt like a legitimate real fucking Dragon Ball Z moment. Like, this is, like, the first time in this entire series that, like, like, they did, like, a signature Dragon Ball Z-esque thing, and it actually felt like something from Dragon Ball Z, and not, like, some sort of pale imitation of something from Dragon Ball Z. This, it felt, like, genuine, and, like, you know, like, th these were people who knew how to do that, and it was awesome, and he fires it, and Magetta, and this, like, you know, fights back with, like, this huge blast of lava, and they have basically a beam battle, which is, like, which is great because it's a fucking beam battle with lava. And, once again, like, it's a, it's a fairly short beam battle, and it's the best one this show has had. This show has had the worst fucking beam battles ever, and finally, the first good fucking beam battle, and it's not even, like, two beams of energy. It's, like, a beam of energy and a beam of fucking lava. I don't care, though. It was good. It was well executed. And then fucking Vegeta just coming in and knocking Magetta back, like, right after, before, like, you know, even, like, the lava drops. Like, he's right up in Magetta's face. Punches him back. And then Vegeta just fucking losing it, just calls him a piece of junk. And Magetta gets thrown off balance and 
finally, like, Vegeta's able to get him out of the ring. And, you know, the, 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 whole, the whole joke being that, you know, metal men are apparently, you know, very, quote, thin-skinned. And you you know that their feelings are hurt very easily, and they they, they kind of lose all their will to fight when you do that shit to them. So and it kind of brings up you know that kind of thing of like wait so did Vegeta win because he was just that much like he was powerful enough to just go all out and just get him out, or was it because you know Megiddo had actually been taken off balance? So it, it does a good job of giving Vegeta the win, but not making Megiddo look like a total puss. I mean, I guess it makes him look like a puss because, you know, his feelings got hurt. But, like, I was talking about power-wise. You know, he was able to hold his own against Vegeta. And, uh, that was nice. Like, you know, it, it felt like a, a, this, this was a really legit fight. And I wasn't really expecting that. You know, there were interesting uh, techniques being put on display here. Um, Megeta with the whole lava thing. His whole, like, igniting his farts. Which is, like, the first fart joke I've ever found funny in Dragon Ball. Um, yeah, like, this was... This was fairly well done. Like, everything about it was just very well paced. You know, they built up the tension, um, you know, in, in peaks and valleys. And, you know, it would cool down a bit and ramp back up, you know. And it had a great payoff. And it ended on a fairly humorous joke, too, which I didn't really expect. Um, it was really satisfying, you know, as a, as a fan of Vegeta, you know, as a fan of Dragon Ball. Um... This is definitely, like, probably my top five favorite episodes of this show so far. So, yeah. Overall, all that stuff's great. You know, they, they, they didn't really, uh, fuck up. Uh, shit, actually, I take it back. Like, they, they, they used the fucking Gotenks theme again. I remember that happening. Um, and I was just like, ah, oh, the fucking Gotenks. That, that fucking do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do theme. I fucking hate that. It is the worst theme in all of Dragon Ball. I don't know why the hell they keep using it. I don't know who has such a boner for that song on this production team, but I hate them. I hate them, and they can go to hell. But everything else, you know, was, was well done. Um, there's a few things, though, I, I, I need to bring up. And uh, first off, uh, and really it's like the only major issue I have in this, is the fact that Vegeta's holding back. We know he is. We know that he has a Super Saiyan 2 transformation that he has at his disposal. And we also know that he has the SSGSS form that we would assume is more powerful than his Super Saiyan form. Uh, form. So, yeah, and even Goku says, like, you know, oh, well, you know, you, you were holding back, Vegeta. You, know, you could have finished this a lot quicker. And it's, you know, he could have. He could have. And it kind of comes off as really hypocritical when earlier it's like, Vegeta's just like, you know, if you hadn't fucking held back against that frost faggot, you could have fucking beat him easily, dumb shit Kakarot. And what the fuck? Then like the like two episodes later, Vegeta's doing the exact same shit. He's fucking holding back, you know, because uh, for arbitrary reasons. He doesn't want to use his full fucking power for some reason. And you could like I'm sure someone's gonna say like, oh well, you know, that you know, they don't wanna waste his power or something. It's like he's wasting more of his power, you know, He's wasting more of his power not going all out. You know, if he just gone to SSGSS, knock Magetta out. So they're really like, you know, the the episode pretends that there's tension. And in, when you're not thinking about it, like, you can be fooled into it. But, like, the fact that you know in the back of your mind that, you know, he has another transformation. He isn't actually, you know, being... He, Magetta isn't that serious of a threat. Magetta's no pushover, but he's not that serious of a threat to someone like Vegeta. And I, I really feel like that's a hindrance to this episode. But even with that, though, like, I mean, you know, uh, maybe there's some sort of stupid arbitrary reason for Vegeta not to go. Like, maybe he feels some sort of pride about not using that form against these guys. Um, you know, maybe that's the case. I don't know. But, yeah, I just... That aside, you know, it's it was a damn good episode. Like I said, it's probably my top five. Hell, it has to be my top five because I don't even think there are five episodes I genuinely really fucking love of this show. Like I said, I love this episode. It was a great fucking episode. Um, you know, next episode is going to be Vegeta versus Kaba. That looks like, you know, that looks like it's going to be pretty fucking awesome as well. Also, I guess I should address, like, uh, apparently Quinn was just like, Ha! Huh, Kaba can turn into a Super Saiyan. You were wrong, Hale Zeon. And I'm like, 
I never said Kava couldn't. I said that we don't know if Kava can, and making fucking theory videos on it is fucking pointless because you don't have the answer. Yes, he was right. I didn't say he wasn't. I didn't say he couldn't be right. I said that he didn't know for a fact, and to make a fucking video on it was a fucking pointless goddamn exercise considering we were going to get the, a uh, the answer in a few fucking episodes. And what happened, two episodes, three episodes later, look, we have the goddamn answer. It was pointless. Uh, that, that, that's my stance on that. I'm not changing it. It's like videos like that are fucking stupid. They serve no real purpose. I understand that there's a market for it. Fine. There's also a market for Batman v Superman. And I don't think that's good either. So, you know, whatever. Uh, but yeah. Things that are good though, this episode. I dug it. I liked it a lot. Um, you know, the, the whole Vegeta holding back thing arbitrarily, it's a problem. Uh, it looks like it's not going to be a thing in the next episode because we're going to see him go SSGSS. Uh, but yeah, it's, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to the next one. You know, they, they, they've built some good faith with me over the last few episodes. You know, they, they, they've had decent episodes the last few episodes, and then this one was genuinely just straight up fucking good. This was a, this was great. I loved this episode. I enjoyed the previous ones. They were great. They have problems, but they were enjoyable, and they had elements that I could appreciate. This was great. I don't expect the next one to be great, because every time I get a great episode, I get a mediocre to shitty episode afterwards, but I'm at least hoping for mediocre serviceable, something that doesn't make me yell at my fucking computer monitor. Yeah. I just want something that's entertaining. Not a high bar. Till next time, guys. Xeon, out.